What's going on guys? Game Master Obi here. Today we're going to be playing Stellaris, which is a grand strategy game from Paradox Interactive. It's a, a Swedish company, I believe. Um, traditionally it's a PC game, but recently they've been starting to port it over to Xbox. It's a little behind the PC edition, so those of you coming for the PC edition will uh, have more content and maybe a little unfamiliar with the older stuff. Um, taking a look at the, the DLC available right now. The most recent thing that came out was the Mega Corporation expansion. Um, and that just came out the other day, um, less than a week ago actually. So I got the inspiration, we've recently started this channel, and I got the inspiration to maybe um, do a Stellaris play playthrough. I really like the game, I've been playing it for a long time. Um, I never do seem to get all the way through a game. Life just gets in the way and whatnot. Um, but with the new expansion coming out, I decided to give it a whirl. I'll probably be playing as a mega corporation, um, just to, you know, try out the new stuff. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd personally, so I think I'm going to be trying to maybe recreate the Trade Federation um, from that Star Wars. Um, so let's see, the first thing we have to choose, um, we'll do a little kind of walkthrough here on how to create your first empire in Solaris, because that's half the fun, is uh, building the empire in your own image. Um, the Trade Federation, Star Wars, you know, their main members were the Nemodians, or as my friend pronounces them, Nemodians. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find a species that looks kind of like them. Uh, probably not among the mammalian species. Let's see. Reptilians don't look terribly promising. Here's the oh, the gecko. Yes, the great gecko empire. Uh, let's look at this. These are bugs. Mollusks, maybe. You might find some among mollusks. No fungoids. Mm. Well, a paradox does have a history of uh, taking things from other universes and putting them in their games. Um, for example, um, this here is a Klingon from Star Trek. Um, also, Vulcan from Star Trek. They do they do occasionally put things. Um, here's an orc, um, which I assume is probably a nod to 40k, and there's a couple Star Wars species in here. Um, like that guy, this is another Star Trek thing. Um, let's see, what else can we take? Thrifty. Um, not adaptive because they don't like to be, you know, places that they can't be. Uh, we are going to take rapid breeders though. We have one pick left and one point left. So let's see what I can get for one point. Communal, terribly good. Traditional. Uh, let's go with quick learners. Um, of course, the leader is the Viceroy. Um, and you know what? Actually, I'm not liking this species look incredibly much. Let's transfer over to handsome fella here. It's a, a ram looking guy. Or we can be sloths, but <clears throat> we're gonna be the ram looking guy because no, it looks good. We'll randomize the name. Make him somewhat intimidating looking. Has to be Ato Nemodia. Now, if I was trying to be the full Confederacy, their capital was actually Sereno, country for some world, but um, we're not gonna do that. Um, it is a wet world. To, well, let's do a tropical world. 
save star name. Ow. Darn it. Randomization system is a little finicky on this, so if you're gonna try this out for yourself, be wary. City appearance. Uh, we'll take a million city. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the other place where you can really, um, really customize your empire. There's all these ethics here, and they really determine how your empire functions. And you can see them; they're on opposite sides here. Um, so you've got militarist and pacifist. If I select militarist, I can also then select pacifist. They are mutually exclusive. The same here, you got authoritarian and egalitarian. Just salt consciousness uh, is an interesting one. That's like a high point. Uh, we won't be experimenting with that here, but that's an option for you. Um, there's a xenophobe and xenophile and spiritualist and materialist. Um, materialist makes sense for the, um, the, the trade federation. I think we're also going to take authoritarian. Administrative capacity under control so that I don't get stuck. Um, I think our other one. I'm debating between trading posts, franchising, and free traders. I think we're gonna go with franchising. Okay, so Empire name and flag, obviously, we're going to be the Trade Federation. Oh no, we're not the Trade Federation. We are the Confederacy. Oh, typing on Xbox is a pain. Uh, and there's a whole option to be able to like create a backstory for your people, and you can name all the ships and all the all the leaders, and usually I don't bother with that because typing on Xbox is a pain and takes forever. Um, those of you that play on Xbox can sympathize with me. Um, messaging after online matches and whatnot can sometimes take a long time. Um, and our adjective will be separatist. What are we separating from in this universe, you ask? Don't ask, because um, technically nothing. Well, no, that's right. That's a cool icon. These are, these are nifty icons. I think we're gonna take this one. Yeah, that one looks like the uh, Republic credit. Um, okay, so we can center it in there, so it looks like a real organization kind of thing. And the CIS, I think, is usually affiliated with the color. Firefly, close enough. Alright. 
features our ship appearance. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of the humanoid ships. Um, these are one of the shortcomings of the game is it only shows you the ship model to use for the um, the construction ships that you use um, to build your various um, installations and whatnot. Um, the warships and trade ships and uh, colony ships and all that that look um, much different from what's shown here. Here's the voice now, which is kind of cool. Our yeah. goal is to create a galactic system that maximizes innovative self-actualization and redefines future-proof solutions oh. for every stage of a customer's life. Oh. Megacorp. That was a long... We're with you okay. every step of the way. <laughs> I, you know, I wasn't expecting that to go very far. Um, this one says the worker, and it has a sickle, so, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, Workers of the galaxy. See. Unite! Oh my gosh. You have nothing to lose but your restraining fields. <laughs> they really put a Russian accent in this. To game. live amazing. is to consume. Every successful What's economy that, is built around a hopeless cycle of repetition where we sell you the empty promise of happiness and fulfillment, and unfulfilled as ever, you still come back for more. These quotes are... Kind of savage. Um, okay, so if I, you know, at, at, next time I play through this game, um, I will definitely be playing as a communist utopian. Workers with, with, with of the galaxy, place. you. Okay. So yeah, I think we're ready to go. Um, so I'm gonna accept my settings here, and then we have to set the settings for the. Um, apparently, I cannot change. So you can set all kinds of things. We're gonna take a spiral. Wait, there's elliptical. Elliptical is the best one. Um, random AI empires. No advanced AI starts because those are annoying. Random fallen empires. Tech magician costs and all that. Okay, this is all fine. We're gonna kick the difficulty up to Commodore. Advanced neighbors. Iron Man mode we'll turn on so that it's eligible for achievements and y'all know I'm not cheating although you can't really cheat too much <coughs> in the console edition there's no like console commands or um, mods that I can download unfortunately one of the downsides of having a uh, potato computer one day it's my aspiration to get a computer that will actually run most of the games that I like to play on computer it's the Lars I'm just very thankful that it has a console port most games like this, um, you can only get on PC. Okay, so, um, this is our first, oh, no, I want to look at the alley. Wow, that's a lot of trade value from that world. Holy moly. Okay, so that's our home world there. Okay, I don't need more idea. It's beautiful. Okay, and the great, I don't even remember how the controls of this game work. Okay, so we are positioned right on galactic core, that's interesting. Um, as you can see, all these little white dots are systems uh, within the galaxy, and there's plenty of other empires out there um, to explore. Let's take a look at our other assets real quick. Um, so, take a glance, we have a small fleet. Um, the little triangular looking ships here, those are our pickets. Um, currently they're called first tall class pickets. Uh, this is our science ship here, and this is the construction ship. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you enter into a game is press down on the D-pad to get to your notifications button, and you can pull up the research slots. Um, and this gives you, you know, multiple options for which to research. Um, usually, there are these theory options, this quantum theory option here. Um, this is just generally what I start with, the theory options, if they're available, sometimes they aren't, because they give you just a flat research bonus of 20%. And I believe you can usually select that, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So you can usually select that for all of them, and it just makes all of your, engine, or your research go a little faster. 
Sometimes if you're doing like a specific playthrough or um, like a specific, uh, you're going for a specific type of empire, sometimes you want to go for a different first technology and that's fine, but usually I prefer to do you know, the uh, research options first. Okay, and you're just going to press Y to um, unpause. Actually, before we do that, if you press right on the D-pad, you get to your outline right here. Um, this way you can select all of your things rapidly. I'm going to go ahead and select our science ship. The science ship is how you explore the galaxy and um, discover anomalies and whatnot. The Distant Stars story pack recently came out for this console port, which is amazing because that, um, I believe it either doubles or triples the amount of story content available in the game, and that's really why I play the game, is the, the story content, the explore, exploration of the galaxy and whatnot. And I haven't played it yet with that, so I'm really looking forward to um, what kind of things we discover. So I'm going to go ahead and um, and you select things. Oh, no, you need to um, Okay. I'm going to go ahead, you set it to survey the system, and it'll go out. I can't look at the system yet. <laughs> but when it gets there, um, I'll show you. There's all kinds of different planets and asteroids and things like that within the, the system. Um, and he'll, the science ship will go ahead and go around and explore, see what he can find in there. Uh, while he's doing that, we're going to go to our construction ship. And we're going to have it. I don't have enough resources. Okay, this is early game Stellar, so I don't have resources to do things. Um, oh, and I have to unpause the game. That would help too. Okay, my construction ship. See my science ship off. You can paddle up more than. This game also just looks absolutely freaking gorgeous in the postal. Um, I, I really like it. It only lags. Massive battles, and I'm using just a. Uh, uh, actually, I'm used to using a base Xbox One. This is a Xbox One S, which is you know slightly superior to my normal, uh, the normal Xbox that I had previously. Um, and it, you know, it's the only lag I've really encountered in this game so far has been from. Um, like a massive space battle. Like, dozens of ships fighting it out over long distances. And that's really cool, but it does sometimes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select my shipyard here. Um, usually what I like to do, again, not mandatory or maybe even the, the meta play, is I like to usually build a second science ship right away. Um, we want to explore as much as we can here in the early game. As you can see, there's a lot to explore. Um, so I'll probably send one science ship off this direction to the north and one to the south. Um, just to see what we got going on. And as you can see here, we've now entered the system and there's all these different um, planets and asteroid fields and whatnot that the science ship has to explore. Um, oh, no, I want to show them the cool blue beam. Oh, who's the scientist? The lead scientist aboard the ship is Gapra Tauros. Alright, Gapra Tauros. Captain, about to explore. You see this cool blue beam? It just kind of shines the beam on the planet for a little bit. Um, just basics, like this, this base um, exploration doesn't take a lot of time. Um, some of the anomalies that you'll find later on do take quite a bit of time. I think they actually updated the visuals on this. Construction um, complete! successfully built our second science ship. Construction complete! Which means I can show you, okay, calm down. Um, I can show you guys how to hire a leader. So you just come over to the science ship, you select it, you can see it says no leader assigned. Press right bumper, go to manage, and just hit recruit leader. Recruiting leaders, I believe, costs energy credits. No, it does. Okay. Okay, so this guy, he is the, all leaders have traits. Um, this guy's trait is roamer, which means he gets plus 25% survey speed. Um, that's very good. Very good for early game. Uh, this guy has Voidcraft expertise, which gets extra speed. Researching Voidcraft thing, not too useful. And Resilient is also a pretty good trait in the early game. Um, plus 25 years to your leader lifespan, so it takes them a little longer to die. Because um, they do. This game takes place over hundreds of years, so they will die. Um, but I think we're going to take the Roamer. He's a little old. But 
um, that extra survey speed, especially in the early game before we meet other empires, is going to be invaluable. Um, so we're going to go ahead and chain him to explore up here. And uh, you know, pardon me guys real quick, I'm going to go get a glass of water. I underestimated how dry all this um, talking would make my throat. I'll be right back. Ship here, and we're going to. There's a lot of different resources on the map. Um, the little energy bolt, I suppose, just go over those. Um, the little, little energy bolt here that is energy credits, that's basically just money. Um, there's a little crystal, red crystal, somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Um, the red crystal is minerals. You use those for constructing stations, things like that. Um, and there's also three different types of research. This is engineering research. Okay, discovery of alien life. The CIS Trockhoffel has made a startling discovery on Bardigan to be the moon is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we encountered life forms that did not originate on Cato Neopoid yet. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we are alone here. Although none of the alien creatures on Bardigan 3 are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. You're right, we may not be alone out here. Anomaly so, you know, detected! My, oh, and we found our first anomaly. Uh, this is a challenging anomaly. It'll take 540 days to do this, so I think we are going to just leave that alone. Um, anomalies are little story events. Uh, you'll occasionally find, like, kind of loot, or sometimes it'll trigger a longer story chain, um, which is really cool when that happens. So this guy out here is exploring, looks like, oh, thank you. Okay, okay, so here's one of the longer story, um, story chains. Um, this is, we have discovered, we have recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Bardigan 3A. Our scientists think they inhabited this region of stars roughly six million years ago. Based on the age of the artifacts, the aliens called themselves the Yut. They appear to have been very large and flat earth for pod and the logs. Okay. Wow, it seems a single individual could reach a length of roughly a hundred meters as an adult. That is ridiculous. Okay. Log updated. Um so that triggers one of the larger story events. Let's see if I can go over my situation log. Um, where we're supposed to go through and um, find all of the artifacts from that civilization. Um, if we do, we get a pretty cool bonus. Sometimes you find their home world, which is like a really um, powerful early game system. And just a, you know, a forewarning. Um, Early Stellaris. Log updated. It's gonna be kind of boring. Um, it's not the. Um, it's not the kind of game you can just pick up and play for a couple minutes and put back down. It's really a long-term commitment. Um, this game you can sometimes sink like a couple days of yeah, gameplay into um, a single Stellaris campaign, and personally, I'm okay with that. Um, I know a lot of people who um, don't have the patience for that kind of game, and that's fine. You know, that's your own personal preference. Um, I'm just the kind of person who likes to sit down and watch this kind of story play out over a long period of time. Uh, how close are we down here to? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's just a couple places left to explore. Um, so this right Construction here. Construction complete. It's a potentially habitable world. It's a continental world, so it's not perfect for us. Habitability is only 45%. Okay. And there's... I can't remember the name of the channel right now. There's a really awesome channel that really goes into depth on, like, all of the Anomaly detected. rules of Stellaris. Sensors are reporting a number of possible points of interest with intense debris fields surrounding the party. Okay. Research that. Have fun. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, Prospect analyzed. So this system was actually kind of lame. I'm kind of sad as it went. So I should have done it. Um, Alright, Cal Mordon. Go ahead and uh, pop up here and survey this system for me. We're gonna have to explore out. Um, I do think we are going to actually, um, the first time you guys can see, we're gonna claim a system. So it costs influence, which is a um, resource that you kind of just passively generate over time. And also alloys. Um, which is what you use to build ships and star bases and things like that. Um, we're gonna claim this just so we don't have like pirate enclaves or things like that spawning in our backyard. Um, that's not something I particularly want to deal with just now. What is the channel's name? I'm gonna look it up real quick because he does some really awesome videos because really in depth on all kinds of different mechanics and a lot of how I learned to play the game actually comes from him. A-Spec. <coughs> A-Spec is his name. A-S-P-E-C. Um, his channel is pretty much devoted to Solaris. He does a couple other things. Um, but if you really want to learn more about the game faster than what I'm going to show you, because I'm going to kind of take things as they come up. Um, if you want to just learn about specific mechanics and really see what the game has to offer, I strongly recommend going and checking out his channel um, first. Now we're in a period of waiting. Looks like, yes, the ship is doing some surveying of the sun. I don't remember. I don't see a debris field on this planet. Alright, well, I'm gonna guess you guys know what you're doing aboard the Troch Hoffel. Captain Parak Inik commanding. And this will give him some experience, um, which is good. Um, the higher level your scientists are, the faster they explore, um, the faster they can execute anomalies, um, the faster your research goes, things like that. So high level scientists are really, really nice. And actually, once these guys start getting a little older, um, I might transfer them to a desk job back in the uh, back at the home planet, um, just so I can let some younger blood take over and um, start gaining some experience. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not doing anything with my military fleet just now, um, and that's because um, moving them causes you to. Right now, they're docked at. Um, the space station, which is this. And moving them away from the space station will require me to pay upkeep. And at the moment, there's really not a reason to move Anomaly them away detected. From them. Oh, hey, another anomaly. We are receiving a weak signal from the surface of the moon. The source appears to be some kind of tracking beacon. I think I know what this is, actually, if I'm right. That's going to yield a lot of resources down the line. So that system will definitely be worth looking into. Especially since it has a potentially habitable world here. Um, so this little planet icon next to the planet. I can't get... it kind of shrinks as we're closer to it. Um, it kind of looks like Earth. Um, that denotes a habitable world. Um, the color will tell you how habitable it is for you. Um, so this orange color means I don't know yet. I haven't explored it. Um, green means it's very habitable. It's ideal for your species. Yellow means you can live there, but not easily. And red means your species usually will refuse to settle there.
you can get around the red, of course. Construction um, complete. By um, using robots, for example, you can use robot populations or uh, things like that. Okay, so we've completed the starbase over Yerba. Well done. The CIS Tal Tarman has created our first extra galactic space station. Excellent. And go ahead and create a mining station over this planet. We're going to grab that resources while we're here. No particular reason not to. Uh, now what we get to do is pick up tradition. Traditions is another way um, that you can really modify how your, um, how your planets or how your, your, how your playthrough goes. Um, if you're familiar with the Civilization series, this is similar to um, choosing traditions in um, Civilization, like, um, oh, whoa. Closer scan to the debris field around the Arctic this level. I discovered an airtight capsule containing an atomic clock. The frequency uncertainty so low that it will be determined another 80, 850 million years before it gains a single second. It is counting down to a date 42 years and 3 days away. Um, we're gonna go ahead and keep an eye on it. <laughs> we're not worried about um, potential galactic destruction. It's fine. If it happens, it happens. Ancient Sur Aha, that's what I thought it was. Ancient survey marker. A small short range transmitter has been located on the surface of Eblu. Ah. It appears to be an ancient survey marker. Place here you want to go to mark a large deposit of precious minerals. Okay, so that just adds um, minerals to that planet, which is very good. Um, and yeah, again, um, so you got the different trees you can go down, and you can get multiple of these as you go along. Um, eventually you'll probably have all of them. Um, the strategy is really picking your first ones. I usually like to go for discovery first, because it increases your research speed, um, survey speed, anomaly research speed, um, right out the gate. So I usually like to go for that one first. Construction complete! Um, that's very useful. Harak Inik has leveled up after completing his work over Bardigan. Oh, well done. Where's my guy at? But he's actually almost done with the system. It's some really disappointing starting systems, I gotta say. My last playthrough, I had some... I had some bomb starting systems. That was great. <sighs> okay, so... If you look over where I'm looking right now on the outliner, you can see... I have a little house icon, meaning I have a building slot for you. And I have a... Um, red suitcase. That means I have unemployed workers. So this will be our first chance to look at the planetary screen. Um, as you see, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, these are districts. Districts are a fairly new thing, at least to me. Um, and they are just base buildings that provide housing. Um, so if you, you know, don't have enough space, you can put more people in it. And also give you the basic resources. So city districts is Prospect a lot um, Generator districts give you more energy credits. Mining districts give you more um, minerals. And farming districts give you more. Also, you can build specialized buildings, but um, actually, watching an ASVEC video, um, he suggests not building specialized buildings until you have filled out your districts. Um, because if you build a specialized district or a specialized building, then your citizens will um, prioritize going into the specialized district, the specialized building rather than the districts. But the districts are what give you your base resources. So that's really what you want to, you want to max these out first before you start building other buildings. Uh, I think we're going to build a mining district. We need a little more minerals in our life. Uh, we're producing, if you look at the top here, we're producing a little more energy credits currently than minerals. Food I'm not usually too worried about until I start expanding. Let's see, we have finished exploring a bard again, which has a lot of minerals actually. Good. Okay. It's not bad. Could be, could be better, could be worse. Um, my influence has gone back up, and so is my allies. So we're gonna take the Cal Tarman from the southern border all the way to the northern border. We're gonna build a mining era, build it, build us an outpost over Bardigan. And again, you can see that little red planet icon. Um, it's a desert world. My people won't. Um, they won't do well there. Um, not, oh, but this one is green. Okay. So 
this is a tropical world, which is actually the exact type of world my home world is. Anomaly so detected! 70%, which is excellent. Optical sensors isolate a cluster of shapes on the banded surfaces of Ebilly 4 that could be buildings. That's a long time to research. Let's, let's hold off on that for now. That was a level 6 anomaly, so it was probably um, one of the. for my precursor quest. Um, anomalies all have levels, as do your scientists. Um, so that scientist is level. Level two, and then anomaly is level six. Um, the um, time it takes to research anomaly goes up um, if the anomaly is like much higher level than the scientist. So if you're the same, if the scientist is the same level as the anomaly, it'll probably take like between sixty and ninety days of in-game time, and a day is really like a second. Um, but it'll take probably sixty to ninety days to research. Um, because it was so much higher than him, that was going to take 600 days, which is 10 minutes, and I really don't want to sit here for 10 minutes waiting for him to do that. We're probably going to play, this is, it's about, about 10, 10 um, Eastern right now. We'll probably play till 11, 11, 15 today. Um, this is a, I hope to do this as a consistent series. I am a, um, I am a, a full-time college student um, and so you know I have classes and homework um, taking a lot of history classes at the moment so um, I have a lot of a lot of homework and a lot of reading on my plate but I hope to be able to um, do this series most Mondays um, before I go to school after I finish my homework so if there's more homework on any given day it might take me a I might not get to it in a week um, but as long as the homework load stays relatively the same, I should be able to at least crank out a couple hours a week. Um, going through this playthrough, and hopefully for you guys, we'll get it all done uh, within a couple hours. Or within a couple hours, I mean. Um, yeah, it, it'll probably take a while to play through. Um, and, like I said, I'm okay with it. Not a, not a big deal if we pick up, um, you know, some some regular subscribers. Construction uh, yeah, complete. this is on, um, this is on Twitch, obviously, um, for those watching, but I do intend to, this will eventually be posted to, um, my YouTube channel that I do with a couple of friends of mine, um, it's Grandmaster Gaming on YouTube, um, where it's not a huge channel yet, um, sometimes it takes a little while to find it. Just search it, search the channel um, on YouTube, and it'll come up as um, I think our icon is two red G's on like a blue gray background. Very cool icon. Um, Prospect to our, uh, our, our our lead developer, um, uh, Game Master Yadu, came up with that. Um, yeah, very recognizable once you go in there, and uh, that's where those will be posted. Exploring Epluk, which means we're probably gonna head over there once we're done up here with Bardigan. Probably gonna go head down and claim this one. Where's my administrative capacity? Okay, so I'm still well under my. And that's, so your minister of capacity, a lot of key information is up along this top bar. You can see your allies, your consumer goods, um, this is strategic resources, um, influence, which you use to claim, um, you can use it to claim uh, systems, you can use it to Construction do, complete. claim enemy systems, it's mostly used for claims, also for things like edicts, um, which are like um, empire-wide laws that you can create. Um, why, why is there just giant hole in my borders? That's disgusting. Well, build your mining stations real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's influence, and that's just something that passively generates. You really don't usually get a whole lot more than three. Anomaly detected. One of the more tricky ones to manage. Um, 
there's Unity, um, which is similar to Culture and Civilization. Again, if you're familiar with that series, a lot of more, more people tend to be familiar with Civilization than Solaris. Um, again, something that's just passively generated and unlocked traditions as you go. Uh, this is your total research. Uh, here's the Empire Sprawl. So, my total Empire Sprawl right now is 18. You can see I got 10 from Districts, 3 from Systems, and Prospect 2 analyze. from my planet. My administrative capacity is 60. Most planets start with 30, or most empires start with 30. So I might be able to expand a little more with this in this playthrough than I would normally be accustomed to, which is, you know, cool. Um, and doing things like colonizing planets and claiming more systems will increase that. Uh, this is my starbase capacity. You can have three um, upgraded starbases. So, um, like this one, little this little one over here over here, but doesn't count toward the um, total. It's just kind of here to passively defend the system. It's not terribly good at it, but you know it's here. And um, but the bigger ones, this this is one of the larger star bases. And you can see the numbers here. That's the fleet power. Um, so this is a fleet power of 470. Um, my base starting fleet and everybody's base starting fleet will have this fleet power of you know, 119. So you're pretty well defended, at least in the early game. And also, naval capacity. Um, not present in games like Civilization, but um, more in other real-time strategy games, like one of my favorites, um, Star Wars Empire at War, or... Total War um, franchise. Uh, basically, I can't have more ships than that. Path. I can have more, actually, but if I do, you if you do go over, you take that. Same Anomaly with the banner ship capacity. Oh, the banner ship is going to lift your Daniel save up this planet. Okay, that's great. Um, same with Empire Sprawl. You can go over your administrative capacity, but you suffer penalties. So it's kind of, it's, you know, it's, it depends on how you want to play it. If you want to expand fast, that's fine. Just don't expect your technology to go up that fast. Um, and I usually like to take it a little, well, no. I usually say I like to take it a little slower, but the second I meet another empire, I'm usually all over trying to rapidly expand, cut them off. Kind of see. You usually don't get a whole lot of information about these systems that you haven't explored. Um, but here we can see there's a black hole over here, which is kind of cool. Black holes can yield pretty unique bonuses. There's another one over here. So I'm thinking I might try to expand along the rim here. Um, I'm going to claim this system for sure because the second planet is really good. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, we're going to go ahead and build a colony ship from my shipyard. Colony ships are expensive. They cost food and um, material, or what is that? Uh, consumer goods and alloys, but they're the only way that you can um, colonize new planets. So, in my opinion, it's usually well worth it to get them, especially if you can find a well that can easily have a little system pretty early on. Because um, if you can get a second planet up to the status of your first planet pretty fast, then you're going to have a very powerful economic base to work. Um, I can't colonize the planet yet, because I don't have the system claimed. I'm going to do that as soon as we finish over here and depart again. So we discovered an abandoned solar sailor ship in orbit around the Shira complete. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails is a large tear where some kind of object passed through, most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Okay, so that just gave me a flat bonus to my engineering. That's cool. Okay, we're gonna take our construction ship, the Cal Tarmon, from Bardigan. We're gonna send it down to. Oh, uh, maybe blue. <coughs> and you'll notice my influence goes down a little time each, each time I play in the planet. And that's intentional, I don't wanna make it so you can't expand too far. Um, it usually costs 75 and claim a planet near your borders. Um, I believe one of the traditions, I believe it's... Uh, what is it? I believe it's 
yeah, expansion can reduce that. Yeah, there's Starbase But um, it's it's base 75. But if I were to go further for my borders, like if I were to try to play this planet before this one and this one, um, it would probably cost around 120 um, to actually play that one. You also can't claim a system until it's been fully explored by your science ships. So just keep that in mind. Um, they really, at least in the early game, try to keep your expanding too fast. So Which, you know, it's cool. I like it. I like when a game uses you in. But Stellaris and most Paradox games. Prospect like, analyzed. Um, they have a lot of other games like Hearts of Iron 4, which is a World War II um, sim. They have um, called Crusader Kings 2. No, they're not Crusader Kings 3 now. Um, it's just like medieval, uh, medieval based thing. And those are great games as well. Um, they don't, unfortunately, have console support, so I can't really play them. They're really cool. Um, but the downside the Paradox games have, it's rather famous, and um, I don't know, it seems to be something they're kind of unapologetic about, which I, I can get. Um, is they don't, they do have tutorials, but they're extremely vague tutorials and not incredibly. Um, not incredibly comprehensive. Um, so, if you're like, it's really hard to just jump into a game like Stellaris. You kind of need that background knowledge, um, that research to have been done in order to play. Um, and I mean, you can play without it. That you do pick up things as you go along. Um, but you're prone to make a lot of mistakes in the early game. If you haven't, uh, you know, if you're, if you're just coming into the game fresh. I was, you know, fanatic as a young adult, um, really teenager. I would do a lot of just watching playthroughs of this kind of game. Uh, mostly I'm a board game guy. Um, or I guess miniatures game. Uh, I really enjoy games like um, a lot of games, workshop games like Blood Bowl, um, Warhammer 40k. Um, never had the opportunity to try like Warhammer Fantasy, which I really wanted to do. And uh, one of my favorite games, actually, the game I'm most heavily invested in um, is uh, X Wing, Star Wars X Wing from Fantasy Flight Miniatures. Uh, really awesome game. It's kind of like a flight sim. Board game form, lots of fun, um, a lot of different challenges there. Not a hugely expensive game. Um, I'm, again, it's a miniature. Prospect game, so analyzed. Still, at least mildly expensive, but back scattering, spectrometry sensors indicate the presence of valuable substances. Sure, research that real quick. And that's another habitable planet. I didn't even notice that. I like it tropical world again, so that's a that's one that we could easily colonize. Yeah, once we're done this with that I think over area is it's kinda cool you can see the little drones putting the station together. They do a, there's a lot of detail on this game, and I really appreciate it. Construction yeah, complete! Again, so that means they're done. Yep. Cool. So you can go from there. This little bubble here is annoying me, so I don't need to go like that. This is this little bubble on my borders. This area. Construction I don't know, complete! I don't know what's causing it. Probably just the distance between my closest planets. I believe that's my colony ship. Hiding with the military fleet. Look at that. That's so sweet. So we are actually going to send our military fleet on escort duty because the colony fleet is really um, important. So we're going to select it to. There's a follow. Send the military 
military fleet first, and then the colony ship. The colony ship is kind of slow. But we'll send the military fleet in there first to clear out any potential invaders. Chonker, man. It's so huge. It's gonna take quite some time to get where it is. I really like the design of it, actually. Um, very, uh, actually pretty reminiscent of the, the, the Star Wars trade variation, which I'm kind of trying to emulate with my empire here. Or, I'm sorry, Mega Corporation. Binary star, no, this is a binary star. Prospect analyzed. Star. It's very cool. Do not match the simulated projection. That is extremely vague. But, you know, research. Okay, that was a pretty simple system. I probably won't go after that one for a while. It's not terribly valuable to me just at the moment. But I'll keep it in mind. It's worth, you know, if I expand down that direction. Probably pick it up on my way. Uh, colony system has arrived. Our colony fleet has arrived. Just head over to the planet. Where's the colony ship? There it is. Um, we're gonna call this another important member. started along the, the the galaxy's core here. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a different experience. I'm used to having to go like preparing planet for know, resource all extraction. Ah, uh, yes. Our colony ship has found a rare patch of open ground in the jungles of Munilence and made planet fall. The landing site is surrounded on all sides by lush vegetation. Ah. Why? Sentry drones have been deployed to guard against predators. The ship has been permanently converted into administrative headquarters in the new settlement, and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so they may serve as the colony's temporary power source. The first crawl city on an alien world. So that is going to take a while to develop. Um, yeah, I see the little colonizing planet bar down at the bottom right there. Um, it'll, it'll take a little while. Um, Construction property. complete! But, that's okay. Okay, so we have successfully... That. Um, another science ship that can be exploring. So it over here. Cooler gain trait. Again, the eye for talent trait. That's pretty good. I believe that means that he can spot... Better people, the area level gap cap plus one, and your experience gain is 20%. Well, that's actually really good. Trade value is not a terribly important thing right now. Secure the borders. That's a, that's a pretty bad agenda, actually. 
at least for the, the early game. Late game, it's, it's really nice. Um, but early game, that's a, that's a pretty rough agenda. Um, so agendas are just passive modifiers that your current leader um, provides to your empire. And um, his is, I get bonuses to building defense platforms, and the defense platforms themselves get um, passive bonuses as well. Unfortunately, another bleeding edge technology um, discovered. Defense platforms aren't terribly useful at this point in the game because they're just they're just not. <laughs> like I don't need to defend myself too much right now. Okay, take assembly patterns. Prospect analyzed. Can we finish? Well, this held a whole one. Wow. Construction oh, complete. Oh. I've had better starts. I have. I've had better starts. Kinda, kinda disappointing so far, but we'll make do. We'll make do. We don't find what we need here, but we'll, we'll take what we need from other people. Actually, I'm just a, a corporation. I probably won't be trying to take things from people too much, but you never know. Sometimes you get the flair for being militaristic. The mood will just come upon you once in a while. That is kind of a disadvantage of how long this game can be. Long stretches of nothing. Is that sometimes you're tempted to just start a war for fun, even if you're not in a particularly good position to be doing that. Um, because, you know, just have nothing better. So we've we fixed the hole on our borders here, that's nice. I think once the construction ship is finished, building this research station. So yeah, that's the science ship. Oh, there he is. You can see it coming together. The amount of detail on this game is just incredible. Scientist is at level three. Excellent. We can recall our. Oh. Prospect we can recall our defense lead. Oh, hello. I think I'm just plowing through this construction zone. Don't you know that the road law is going faster than light? That's a very section complete. The galaxy right here. That's uh, an unusual, unusual start. Oh, because there's not even really like at least from uh, there's not really a way to access this part of the galaxy without going all the way through here, oh, which isn't necessarily a problem. It gives me a lot of defensive options. Uh, it'll be a little harder to break through my defenses when the time comes, so I can just focus on a couple choke points. I'm not really trying to be a huge empire in this playthrough. Um, I'm probably going to try to vassalize my neighbors, um, make them subservient to me and my interests, so as to you know, control the galaxy that way, um, rather than through um, specifically uh, military force. Because you know we don't we don't have time for that. We're trying to make we're trying to make a quick buck here. He's jumping through. Oh, it's already 10.30, man. Time flies when you're playing this game. Which is good, because it'd probably be incredibly boring otherwise. That's a lot of things. Alright. So the... Troc Hoffle. Gonna have a lot of stuff to explore here. It's work there in the patch system. How are you doing here? Well, there's significantly less stuff down here. The southern part of the galaxy so far has been a lot less profitable than the north part. This 
to provide some energy credits at least. It is kind of frustrating sometimes when there's just these like multiple, just completely useless planets. That's a toxic world. Unhabitable, a rocky planet with a thick atmosphere that is lethal to all known forms of higher life. <coughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, not cool, obviously, but it's cool that it's included. Maybe it'll eventually let me send some robots down there. It's not, it doesn't have any resources at all, but, you know, for the lulls. Alright, where's my shipyard? I think. Yeah, we're in a private colony ship. I don't actually know what the difference between a private colony ship. Oh, it just costs energy credits, which is good, because I don't want to spend the outlay right now. So we will create a private colony ship. <coughs> so that one just costs energy credits rather than all the other resources that it would normally cost. And I'm a big fan of that. Um, we're going to send that out to Nashira here once he's finished constructing the starbase. As you can see again, here he is. You can see it slowly inching its way to completion. So much detail. Love it. So the amount of hours the programmers had spent on this game had to be absolutely extraordinary. And there's so much story content. We haven't really run into it so much of it yet. <coughs> I'm sorry, my throat is being aggravated today. Um, we haven't really run into too much story content just yet, but um, there is a huge amount that this game has to offer. Construction complete. Really looking forward to exploring it all. We finished your construction of the area. We're gonna have to cool it with expansion for a little bit to. I am out of influence to do so. I'll probably grab this planet when we're when I have enough influence to do it, just because it would bother me to have my borders like this. Sometimes I make less than optimal plays, just because I can't stand on the borders. So. Okay, so we have more unemployed pops. So we're in your head and or pops population. I'm sorry. <coughs> and we're gonna grab a generator district on the home planet. So our energy credit generation is now lower than our mineral generation. Actually, we'll cancel that. I think it's going to be important that we get some more food generation. Because the other planets are going to be sucking it up for a little while. Another bleeding edge technology discovered. Discovered our new technology. It takes longer, I think, now in this with this new expansion of discovered technologies. Biodiversity studies are done. And planetary unification is another really good one because uh, it gives you just bonus unity, just flat, um, which is really nice. Whenever you can get just bonus generation of any resource without having to you know, pay for it or um, Anomaly detected. Like have a building for it. That's really good. Earth's map surface. Planet will tend to find a strange map formation in the southern hemisphere. It does not appear to form naturally. Oh, go ahead and discover it. Kandara. That's got to be the last thing you're surveying, right? Oh, there's still another thing. Right there. This is cool. Like the um, icy ring of asteroids. I never really noticed that before. That's a really cool um, really cool addition. So I guess it's a really cold system. <coughs> That's why there's no habitable worlds here. <laughs> Except this molten world. Alright. Rocky world that is scorching hot, the atmosphere is thinner, non existent, and lava from the interior flows freely due to constant volcanic eruptions. <coughs> so we've discovered Mustafar. Can I rename this planet? Well, you know, if there's people actually in the chat, just remind me next time I play um, that I want to rename them Mustafar when I eventually claim it, because why not? It's on the outer rim. Molten planet. Fits with our Separatist playthrough, I like it. Yeah, we have another 
position available, we're gonna go ahead and take. Um, probably science division next. Because research station output isn't terribly useful right now, because I only have like two research stations. One research station actually. So we'll hold on that until I start getting some more. Another bleeding edge technology oh, discovered. Done. I finished another technology, excellent. Oh, administrative AI just increasing research. Complete. All research by 5%. Log updated. Prospect analyzed. Oh, wonderful. This is a construction utterly, complete. Uh, except for that two energy. Oof. I don't like it. <laughs> I need better systems. We might have to reach out a little farther. Um. I you to explore this little cluster. I'm probably not going to explore super far beyond the cluster because I want to. Explore out along the rim. Actually, yeah, cancel that. Construction complete. Do this. And then we'll just this cluster. We'll come back to it with our other ship. Actually, it might be time to build a third ship. Science ships are my weakness. I can just. I never seem to be able to have enough of them. Ha! Ah, the colony ship is done. Okay. In the colony ship, to Nashira, and we'll send our military fleet there as well, just as an escort. Make sure nothing gets in the way. And yeah, I think I have plenty of minerals. So we're gonna go ahead and build another science ship. Jazz Mac, probably a waste of influence, honestly. High level Solaris players will probably bash me for a non optimal play there, but you know, it's just a giant gap in my borders. It's really, I'm gonna it. really interested. Sometimes black holes are really interesting events. I'm really interested to see what we got going on there. That's a pretty big one, too. But this down here is a fairly small black hole. Quite large. It might be the Gargantua black hole, which would be really cool. Gargantua is a uh, special black hole that has a, uh, a really cool event chain surrounding it. Construction so complete. A bit, at least the early game. So that's our other science ship, I believe, which is finished. Yes, the CIS Jal Tortoise. I mean, you're going to be slow. Leader. Expertise. The expertise ones are really good for your home scientists, but they're not particularly good for um, roaming scientists. So we're going to take the guy with resilient for his extra lifespan, and we're going to send him out along the right here where the other guy isn't going. I love one over here. There's a lot of black holes over here. This is also the first time in a long time I haven't spawned in a nebula. Nebula are cool. Um, so, if a system in a nebula, you can't use your sensors to be able to see into it. Um, so if you got enemy ships moving around in there or something like that, um, you can't see... Is that a nebula? Um, then you can't see what's going on in there. It's, it's very cool. Lots of, lots of detail. To the, the strategy of this game. So this is a relatively few nebula in this game. This 
tall area. This is that one. I probably actually won't get over to this area at any point during this game. Unless I'm like defending it against the end game crisis or something. Because that's really far away. And I'll probably, there's probably empires that'll be pretty well established over there before I get there. So I need to go that direction. Archenar. Construction complete. I came at this from the wrong direction. I actually really like the design of the ship a lot. The humanoid designs are very cool. That didn't used to be a thing. You know, I just didn't used to have a, a ship design. No. But Paradox released the attack. Species that you can play as. Now, uh, in addition to the ships, I really like it. We can never claim the resources over this planet. We're gonna go do that as soon as you finish here at Jazzmac. Building our little energy harvester. I guess we're using nanobots or something to construct this. ship has reached the system and we'll send it to Nashira, which we are going to name uh, we'll name this server now oh wait no this was a system with lots of minerals and it's got a red sun so we were going to name this Geonosis Another important separatist system. And then we're gonna make that probably our mineral output droid creation facility once it's available. Wait until the colony ship has successfully planted its roots and we'll send the we'll send these guys back. So I guess the private colony sh colony ships are very like Mayflower esque right and sponsored by Sponsored by independent contractors. Come put roots down somewhere else in the galaxy. It's the kind of vibe I'm getting from that kind of thing. Let's see. I think they have a unique animation for colonization. I think they gotta enter orbit and send down some shuttles. Preparing planet for resource extraction. Oh, no. Never mind. No animation. It just disappears. Alright, well we are now on another planet. It doesn't cost as much resources as it used to. It's all nice money, which I appreciate. Used to really cripple your economy. Prospect analyzed. Colonization is going well. Research the Jincath system. Another virtually useless one. I like it. <clears throat> I mean, energy credits are never useless, but just two of them. It almost costs as much an upkeep as it does to. Uh, uh, it almost costs as much an upkeep for the station um, as it generates, so it's almost not worth it. Also, you can see my administrative capacity has now reached 31. Um, which, with a normal, a normal empire, uh, would have put me over. So I would have had to either stop expanding or start taking penalties right now. But because I'm the mega corporation, um, and because I have, a, I took a civic that I took um, the private prospectors, um, I have additional room to expand. Essentially, now that is a that's a rich system right there. southern part continues to yield better results than the northern part of the galaxy so far. I guess I'm really kind of right in the center. If this was the Earth, I'd be right along the equator. 
again. It's a unique spot. I've never started here. Yeah, what? How many systems on our border now? Six. No, seven. We have seven systems in our water right now. Um, we got about 20 minutes left of gameplay. I'll probably colonize the system as well. Before wrapping up the video. Just to get us to a nice even eight, and we'll have a nice blob. Anomaly like detected. Band along the rim. A small docking hatch leading to the interior of this asteroid is visible at the rim of a small crater on its surface. Okay. Interesting. Where was that? Was just, was that. This guy. Interesting. So this asteroid has an entry hatch? That's very interesting. It already has, it's yielding a lot of trade value already. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, to start collecting some of this trade value. I guess I don't have that much going to waste right now. The trade value you have to build um, space stations um, with like specific trade collection hubs um, to actually collect and you know it could kind of be annoying because they only have a collection range of like one little jump so for example this system's trade value is out of range of the station because it only has a range of one jump it's especially annoying because the system is actually closer but that's not how distance works in Stellaris at least not until you get like jump drive and stuff but like you can see this system the trade value is a little like blue ring um, with green numbers underneath it. Um, this system and this system both have their trade value being collected. With that one being the outlier there. I figure this is where we find the good system. Anomaly yeah, detected! Again. Ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Mescal system. Explore! Supra Vun. It's not a pretty good system so far. Pirate treasure. The asteroid appears to have been used intermittently as a base by a band of alien pirates roughly 1,000 years ago. A small boarding party entered the base and managed to recover their abandoned treasure hoard. It consisted largely of stolen trinkets and artifacts, but some of it still appears to be of value. These ill gotten gains shall serve the state. 500 energy credits, which actually nicely refunds the amount that we spent on the private colony ship a little earlier. We can recall this fleet. No longer need to be there protecting the colony ship. I don't. <laughs> if you're wondering why I don't send military ships with like science ships and stuff, it's because I don't particularly care about them. Like, they're. Obviously, I do care about them, but A, they're pretty good at avoiding combat. They'll usually jump out. Before it gets too hairy and um, also they're even if they don't make it out they're pretty easy to replace um, they're both like 100 alloy prospect analyzed 600 resources that's not really Construction complete. Use. sonified science the CIS Trockhoffel crew has succeeded in isolating a sign signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Moscow system signal is a song Song, interesting. Complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, to be precise, and the one one that science officer Sir Parak Inik cannot seem to get out of their head. Okay, curious, curious indeed. My construction ship is idle. I believe. So let's get it to spend most of my influence again. Influence. It's just that resource that I always seem to be out of. There's one of those in every game I play. Also, this is a fantastic system out here. 16 minerals, and they're not like... It's not like 16 minerals spread out among all of these different planets. It's like 16 minerals over there, which is really good. So I don't have to create that many stations to harvest it. 
very impressed by this plan. Who's the captain? Gapratoros. Gapratoros, you're up for promotion. We'll keep your, your name in mind. The next wave of promotion starts. This is also a pretty nice planet out here. That's some nice science. Truck hopple, the guy with the song stuck on his head. Yeah, so we'll claim the system. We'll see what this anomaly is, and we'll probably call it there for this particular session. So, we made some pretty good progress. We've explored the immediate surroundings of the galaxy, um, but you guys can really kind of get a sense for how long this game takes sometimes um, to play, because we've been going for, what, almost an hour and a half, and we only have, like, the surrounding systems explored. Um, neither of our colonies have finished developing, although uh, Moonlist is pretty close, I think. Actually, I'm thinking about it, I'm going to rename the name of the star. Otherwise, I'll forget. That's just. Prospect analyzed. Next. Uh, periodically spews an alarming, eclectic mix of particles and radiation to the void. Okay, that is kind of alarming. Radiation is never good. But other than that, system is completely. Research that anomaly. Is that an ice asteroid? It is. Sweet. Like I said, big fan of that kind of kind of little detail. Oh, yes, my is almost finished. We're gonna go ahead and update the name of the star as well. Just so I can see it on the galaxy map. Um, because if you just rename the planet, then you can't, um, the name won't appear on the other side. So now, complete. Now, now it comes up as Geonosis instead of Nashira on the galaxy map. Okay, so you're finished there. We'll build, we'll build the research stations too. We'll start getting those going. Research stations just increase your passive research speed. Which is lovely. Our food has gone up significantly. Holy moly. Planetary Jumping production hub established. Six. Prospect analyzed. Probably because the. Okay. Um... Wow. Another useless system element. Okay. Um, you know what? Actually, I know you have orders to go there, but I want you to explore this black hole. Video is almost over. I want to get that explored. Okay, so come look at Moon Lens. It's a pretty small planet. Population. We have what one person living here? One Prospect analyzed. And there's also an army here for some reason. What does my total population show me? No. Hold. An encounter. Interesting. Is it in the... Oh, yep, there it is. Oh, this is a traitor enclave, I think, actually. That's the first one situation log. say 23 months, but that's a useful thing to have within my borders. It's a very powerful station, so um, it probably usually doesn't help defend you too much. But prospect analyzed traders. Oh, oh, dark matter. Yeah, I can't get dark matter yet. That's a useful, useful resource. Okay, so yeah, that's a very interesting system. I like it. Black holes usually yield some very interesting stuff. 
and this is probably like an artist troop or a trader on blade or something like that. Uh, both of which I can deal with. Those are uh, both useful. Especially to have near my borders. If I can have them in my borders, even better. I'll probably go up and play in the system eventually. Unless somebody else already has, which I doubt. Well, I do think we are going to leave it there, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel for more great content. I'm going to try to do this once, probably once a week on Mondays. Um, that'll be my consistent one. Maybe if it gains more popularity, I'll do it more often, depending on how my homework schedule allows. Um, but yeah, have a great day. Um, may the force be with you. And I'll see you all later.